Good evening and welcome to Clear Fork High School for tonight's Division II state semifinal matchup between the Shawnee Indians and the Warren Howland Tigers. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stover. And Josiah, four teams left in Division II, the best of the best. Both of these teams really battle-tested to get here. Uh, a tough road, but here they are, just one win away from playing for a state title. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the teams, when they get here, you know, everybody's good. You know, position, everybody on the field, you know, you can't really hide anybody, you know, at this position. You know, the best teams in the state are here um, tonight, you know, and just looking at them, you know, it's really going to come down to execution. You know, which team takes their opportunities, takes the chances that are given to them, capitalize on them, and see which teams make the fewest mistakes. So should be a good one tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Howland Tigers. They're going to start in goal, number zero, Zach Lewis. Number two, Jet Hua. Number three, Vasali Gentis. Number four, Alexander Bakaris. Number eight, Dimitri Gentis. Number nine, Pasquale Caranate. Number 11, Caleb Rose. Number 16, Herb Lawson. Number 17, Keaton Perry. Number 18, Jack Kenny. And number 29, excuse me, number 29, Lucas Beringer, as we see. Shawnee able to get it down deep into the defense of Warren here early. And I think that's going to be a very interesting matchup to watch. You know, this Howland team, very, very good defensively. Yeah, the absolutely. Shawnee team, though, an offense that they have not seen yet like this year. Yeah, absolutely. And then we just saw a little mistake there um, by this Howland Tigers team that allowed Austin Miller. And uh, for those of you watching our broadcast, you know, we know Austin Miller and his ability um, on the field, you know, comes into the night 37 goals eight assists the um, on the year so you know a, a great player and you can't give him any opportunities and right there he had a kind of a one-on-one -on -one with that last defender you know a little bit of mishap there um, in the 18 but you know you don't want to give him too many opportunities so now we'll take a look at the Shawnee Indian starters first in goal Jack Tenwaldi number five Luca Facillo number six Alex McGuire number seven Mateo Facillo number eight Sam Tenwaldi number nine Noah Scheid number 10 Colin Scheid Number 11, Austin Miller. Number 14, Noah Neff. Number 22, Ethan Parlopiano. And at number 40, Caleb Miller. So both of these teams well known for their defense. We're going to see a lot of, uh, of good defensive play out of both of these teams. You know, it's going to be, I think, important, especially early for one of these offenses to try to establish themselves, put some pressure on there. You know, make, you know there's got to be a lot, of, a lot of tension, a lot of pressure. Each one of these teams know what they're doing. And, you know, here in the early going is usually when you can see kind of those nerves and, and a little of that adrenaline as you see Howland now trying to work along on the right side. Nice stop and go. Went right into a challenge. Good forward as he works along that sideline trying to get around Shide. And Shide with the takeaway. Great defense. And that's what we're talking about. Good defense. Shide gets it up to Tenwaldi. Tenwaldi looks to control as this one works up the side. And Howland's going to send it out for a throw in for the Indians. Well, and as you said, this uh, Howland Tigers team, known for their defense, doesn't give up a whole lot of goals um, on the year. But, you know, we got to talk about the Shawnee defense, too. That back four, you know, is solid. Um, they've played together, you know, for, for a couple years now. You know, they know what they're doing. And we'll see both teams, you know, like I said, who can take advantage of just those, those little mishaps that may happen during the game. Um, and so far, both teams, like you said, just, just kind of settling in into the environment, trying to, trying to feel each other out. Um, we'll see, you know, in these next 10 minutes if the teams can settle down a little bit. You talk about that Shawnee defense. I think one of the unsung heroes of this Indian squad is sophomore Caleb Miller. They like to let him run free back there to try to be able to go and find the ball instead of having to be marked up and stay on a man. And when he does that, he leads this team in takeaways. He's extremely good at for a sophomore. You talk about IQ when, he, when it comes with sports. He doesn't make bad mistakes. When he goes for slide tackles, when he goes for takeaways, even in the box, he's very calculating about what he does and he just g gives um, this defense an, an extra kind of edge and it also, but he doesn't do it by causing, you know, mistakes, getting balls turned over, turning penalty kicks, you know, goal kicks. He, he's very smart about his defense and a lot of times on the defensive end, that kind of thing goes a little unnoticed because everybody's so excited about the goals. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's nice, too, you know, as your teammates, knowing that you have that smart defender wide. behind you that if you do make a mistake, you know, you want to be physical and go challenge the ball right away. But if you do make a mistake, you have that player behind you to back you up. And, you know, that's one thing Shawnee strived on all year at this defensive side is, is you know, not making a whole lot of mistakes, but having that strong defense behind him. So long goal kick comes out just across midfield. Shide's able to head that one back towards the Shawnee side. 
Miller's going to take the throw in for the Indians. Now he's going to drop it as you see Scheid come up to take it. Miller going to work one on one. Works back around to his left, able to get back into the middle. Trying to feed into the box, seeing if he couldn't meet uh, Sam Tenwaldy in there to see if he couldn't get a shot. And it's picked up by the keeper. And you can see, you know, there's really no secret at this time. Everybody's really well scouted. Everybody knows, you know, who the best players are, who, who you need to try to stop. And, you know, most of these teams can get it done in a lot of ways, but Austin Miller attracts a lot of attention. And you saw that time as he went to dribble it in. Three Tigers quickly around him. He finds himself double, triple teams quite a bit. And I think, you know, we were talking before we came on air, one of the keys, I think, to this tournament run lately is that they have so many talented players on this Shawnee team, so many guys who are skilled offensively and defensively. And you've seen other guys with that kind of talent step up and, and really take on a bigger role. And then once they're starting to do that, it eases things up on Austin because now they can't all focus themselves on him. And then we've seen, you know, other guys, Mateo with the with a huge goal to um, cap off the regional final. Caleb Miller had a big goal in the district final. Um, so we, Sam Tenwaldy came up huge in the regional semis for this team. So you've seen other guys be able to step in and help out and get some of that pressure off. Well, and like you said, it's just that that special type of player that you have in Austin Miller. At this point, you know, he's going to draw all attention as we see the, the entire defense, you know, two players on him every time he touches the ball. You know, and, and with the ability of these players um, from Shawnee, you know, as you said, they've stepped up in this tournament run, you know, made some big plays, um, you know, some big goals, you know, to, to crown the be regional champs. So, you know, but you, you love to have that special type of player on your team that, you know, you give him an inch and man, he's, he's going to take it. So, um, you know, it's, it's a really, you know, exciting, especially for this Shawnee team in this run this year is, you know, see all these players, you know, really coming together as a team and stepping up. See Luca Facillo send this one deep. It's Ten Wolde's back for the Indians. Allen Tigers defense able to gather that one in and move it back up. Here's Hua. Now Tigers trying to find a little bit of space. It looked like they may have had a good opportunity there as that one was able to get into Lawson. Not quite able to gather it in. And now we're going to have another one sent into the box. Look for the header. Just a little bit too much on that one as that header just missed. I think it was Hua who was in the box as Howland had a good opportunity there. Yeah, and there was a final touch from the Shawnee defender, but like you said, a good ball, a challenging ball, about 12 yards out, you know, really a 2v2 in the box on that cross. You know, really good ball, and we'll see if this Howland team can continue to, you know, put those quality balls in the box and see if they can connect with one. Well, Howland's going to look for a long throw in. And see what they can do with it. This one goes in deep, but Tenwaldy comes out, is able to get a hand on it, gathers it back in before it goes out. And kind of a misstep there by Jack, Jack Tenwaldy. You don't see that very often. He's pretty secure in his decision making and coming out of the box and you know just kind of overran that ball and just got a hand on it. But luckily his teammate was there to kind of box off any oncoming attacker and um, they were able to, to push the ball. Sam Tenwaldy on the far sideline. Putting some pressure on that defense. It's going to be out. It's going to be a throw in for the Indians. Hunter Drury ends for, enters the game for Shawnee. Hunter Drury subbing in for the Indians as it looks like Luca Facillo. Not sure if he's a little hobbled. It looks like he's going to want to try to stretch out a little bit. Throw in by the Tigers. Now fight around the midfield. Still challenging for the loose ball. And we're going to have a whistle. This one's going to go the Indians' way. Shawnee now on the restart. This is Mateo Facillo. See the Tigers not sitting back, letting the Indians dictate anything. Coming out and challenging quickly, but now here's Miller. Miller gets it over to Tenwaldy, and Tenwaldy gets it by the goalkeeper for the first goal of the night. Great two-man game that time between Austin Miller and Sam Tenwaldy, and the Indians take an early one nothing lead. Yeah, and what a first touch there by Austin Miller on that cross. 
you know, takes it off the chest on the second touch, finds his teammate. And you know what? What a finish there. And putting it right past the keeper. So, you know, just exactly the start that this Shawnee team wanted to do. Come out, play their style, play fast, outwork them, and, you know, got an early goal. And I think that's exactly what Shawnee was looking for is they wanted to try to come out and get one on the board quickly. We mentioned the prowess of this Howland defense. So good of only giving up 10 goals all season, including the tournament run, regular season, even better than that. Uh, and so coming out quickly, able to get a goal on the uh, uh, up on the board as we take a look at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And I, you can't talk enough about these early goals and taking some of that pressure off when you're able to just kind of take a deep breath in big games like this. Yeah, and as uh, Coach Quatman, you know, got us some keys, you know, um, before the game, you know, he said, you know, first they got to play our style, second they got to outwork them and then take chances when the mo momentum shifts their way and, you know, showed that right there on that play, got a little uh, off of a foul, you know, got the ball into the box early, found Austin Miller, he was able to find his teammate and, you know, continue just to play their style of play. Almost another run out right there by the Indians, but this one's going to go out. Going to say last touch by Howland. And that came very close to a corner kick, but it looked like maybe it hit the flag. So, you know, Josiah, you throw know this one Johnny. a little bit more than I do. If it hits the flag, throw in or corner kick down there? Well, it just really depends on which way it rolls out. Um, flag's in play. If it hits the flag and line. would stay there, then it's still in play. Um, it went to the right of the flag, so no corner kick. So the official called it right with a throw in. And a header, almost another one. Great stop that time. As the keeper, Zach Lewis, is in great position, able to grab that one as the Indians almost had a second Zach goal. Zach Lewis with the pickup in the goal. Yellow card given to Lima. And we have our first yellow card of the night. Looks like that's going to be on 10 Waldies. He's going to come out. Not quite sure what went on down there as to what the cause of the yellow card was. But well, you know, it looked like, look like he ran into the goalkeeper a little bit late. You know, these officials, they're always going to protect the goalkeeper. Um, and it looked like he just did it a little bit late. So the official gave him a yellow card and just to make sure it doesn't happen again. So, you know, and, and kind of a side note to all of this, just under 30 minutes left to go here in the first half. As you see, Howland trying to get something going. Caleb Miller kicks this one out. So Howland will have a throw in. Shawnee holds on. Let's say they go on. The, you know, lots and lots of game left to play. But... Sam Temwaldi, in the back of his mind, has to remember that he has that one yellow. As he goes on and, you know, if something were, were to happen and he gets that second one, he gets that red and Shawnee holds on to win this game, he's sitting out Saturday night. Yeah. And so that's one of those things where you wonder if maybe that might come into play for the senior, maybe a little bit more tentative than, maybe, than he usually would be because he doesn't want to risk picking up that second yellow. Yeah, absolutely. You know, especially it's it's kind of rare to see yellow cards so early in a game. Usually officials like to give a lot of warnings, kind of get to the feel of the game. But, you know, the official thought it was it was late enough and wanted to protect that goalkeeper. But like you said, is now when he comes back in, you know, it's going to be in the back of his head is you've got, you know, to really be patient. You know, maybe maybe hold off on some of the challenges that you might normally go into. Um, but, you know, being a senior and the experience he has, you know, I'm sure the coach is just going to get back in there. You know, just play your game. And he, the big part of this Shawnee offense, he's had a huge tournament run. He has come up so big for these Indians. You know, he is a big piece of, of what they do. So, so a little earlier, Caleb Miller having a great header to send this one back out as the Indians go on charge one more time. Austin Miller trying to lead it. And we see this quite a bit. You know, Austin, the, a big kid, and a lot of defenses try to get in his way. And most of the time, it doesn't usually work, very, work out very well for the defender that time. You know, kind of the same thing as, you know, you see the defender go down, you hear the whistle, you're like, oh, okay, this is going to go the other way. Well, no, it's just, you know, that it's actually on the defense. Austin's just that much bigger than a lot of people. Yeah, and it's rare to see a player his size with his athletic ability, you know, really running at defenders. And when you, you know, you got your numbers, you see the, the back of the defender's number, especially as an attacking player, you know you've got him exactly where you want him. And even in that last possession, got the defender, tried to split him, you know, drew the foul, you know, which he's done many times this season. So a great play by Herb Lawson there for the Tigers. But now Luca trying to center into the box. This one gets sent back out. Another cross. This one gets headed out as well. Allen Tiger defense coming up big, trying to clean up in front of the net. This one's going to get through. Mateo Facillo 
Trying to get through three Howland Tigers, and you see why that defense is so good. Three good opportunities for the Indians, and Howland stood tall each time. As we got a foul there, the official was playing the advantage, but saw that the ball was lost by this Howland Tigers team and calls the foul. Which I like to see officials give advantage, you know, and, and let them play until they see that, you know, the play is no longer in, in an attacking position. Um, you know, because so many times you see almost one on one, one v ones, you know, gone away because the official calls it early. So, you know, good call on the, by the official. Caleb Miller with another header. Great height that time to get up and we'll knock this one out. Throw one coming to Howlett. Well, you mentioned C Caleb Miller earlier, you know, not the biggest player to play a center back position, you know, for a team. But you saw there just saw, he goes up and gets it. He's aggressive. He attacks the ball and you know, any chance he gets. And, um, you know, like I said, usually you see those center backs tall, you know, long players where, you know, he's probably the shortest on that back line. But, you know, his effort and his the way he attacks the ball is you know, definitely a leader on that back line. Howland trying to get their offense set up, see if they can't get another opportunity. We've seen them have a couple, not able to cash in their few opportunities here in the early going. 26, or excuse me, just under 26 minutes left to go here in the first half. Shawnee on top, one nothing. Whistle this time. Looks like that one's gonna go against, I believe it was Alex McGuire. Well, quite a few fouls here early. You know, as you said, mentioning those yellow cards, sometimes, you know, if you start fouling too many times, that official may have to go to his pocket to find a yellow. And like you said, you don't want to, especially this early in the game, you don't want to have a yellow in the back of your mind, you know, something where you have to play a little bit more timid. Um, so we'll see if, you know, like you said, both teams just kind of calm down a little bit. Bad touch there by the center back. Austin Miller's on tracking it down, and the Howland player kicks it out of bounds. Great catch-up speed by Austin Miller that time. Sam Tenwaldi checks back into the game. Alex uh, Bakeris didn't have much of a choice. He just had to get rid of that one because Austin Miller was coming down with a full head of steam. Did not want to get him going towards the goal any quicker than that. Here goes a good touch. And that time, Austin Miller not able to handle it. Strong kick over. And Howland's going to send this one right back up towards the midfield. Pretty even so far. No one really controlling the midfield. Been pretty back and forth. One mistake by Howland. That's what led to the Indians' goal. Is they did a nice job working between Austin Miller and Sam Tenwald. Is Sam able to get the first goal of the night? There is Sam Tenwald back in the game after his yellow card. Silla working around midfield. Now they're just going to touch it back and forth. Luca Basillo doing a nice job on that far sideline to put the pressure on. The Tigers just have to boot this one away. It's going to go out. Throw one's going to come to the Indians. Caleb Miller work that sideline just over the outstretched head of one of the Tiger defenders. A little high up. It's kind of hard to see on that far sideline side of exactly the numbers on that side. And as you said, no team really controlling that midfield early in this game. A lot of more direct play, trying to find those long balls um, to their teammates. So um, one thing, you know, Shawnee has done really well this year is controlling that middle, you know, passing, possessing the ball, you know, and then finding those through balls to, you know, Austin Miller, you know, Sam Ten Tenwaldi, um, all those type of players that they have up front, you know, but this pressure by this Howland team early, you know, making them play a little bit quicker, play a little bit more direct early in this game. The last two weeks seen a different kind of speed than what they, they typically have. And, you know, they've been up to the test. you got to give them a lot of credit, but it's sometimes it can, get a, uh, can take a little getting used to when you're just constantly seeing these guys flying at you. Tenwaldi tried to send this one up as he was looking for Facillo. Allen's able to intercept it, moves it back up. As slowing down here a little bit, trying to see what they have open. This one's going to get sent ahead. Caleb Miller there was to send it right back. And this one 
goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Indians, throw in coming for the Tigers. So Howland has had an interesting trip to the state semifinals. Tournament games have been uh, a very close, some nail biters. In the district finals against Kenston, they won 2-1 in a shootout. Poland Seminary in the regional semis, they won 3-1. Regional finals, a 2-1 victory over Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy. So they've had some nail biters, especially the, uh, the shootout there in the district finals. So you know that there's not going to be a lot of panic. They're used to playing these cloak tight games. They, they know that they just need a little bit of space. Well, in tournament time, you know, anything can happen with any team, you know, especially in the game of soccer, you know, so you, you know, you really have to prepare, you know, mentally for those tight games, those close games, sometimes opponents you've seen throughout the year that you might have, you know, blown out or, or three or four goal lead, you know, turns into a shootout or, or two one game. So, you know, even as a coach, you want to kind of, you know, glad you have to face some of those tough, tighter games so your team's prepared for games like this. Shawnee, the Shawnee Indians rode through the tournament. They won a district final against uh, longtime rival St. Mary's to continue that impressive WBL unbeaten streak. 36 games in a row is a nice move as this one's going to go right, uh, right of the goal is. We saw Jed Hulo with a shot wide of the goal. Job on the defense. In on the last substitution for Lima, number 13, Hunter But Drury. Shawnee, after St. Mary's, it's kind of been almost corner kick. How you don't want to say revenge or redemption, but their whole road, including tonight's game, has included kind of ghost of tournament past, if you will. They, they've had a long rivalry with, with St. Mary's in the WBL, able to continue those wins as a nice corner kick comes in on the cross. But the Shawnee. Indians defense able to send that one away and right at the feet of a Howland Tiger but a little bit too high on this one as it goes through the goal post and we'll have a goal kick for Tenwaldi but there so they're able to kind of cap off that WBL domination that they've had then they go play Lexington a long time turn to rival met them in regional semis and in regional finals Lexington they've gotten the better of them at times Lexington's got the better of Shawnee and knocked them out and then they go and play Beer, they get another opportunity, and now here they are against the Howland team two years ago, knocked them out of the state semifinals. Yeah, and we see some of these same teams every year, you know, uh, as you said, kind of their, their redemption tour um, that they've had so far this year, but, you know, reading about, you know, just the respect they have, especially for teams like Lexington. Good feed on the inside, as this one's going to get knocked out. Howland continues to put the offensive pressure on, but the Indians' defense up for the challenge. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, teams were like Lexington, you know, who they played early on in the season, you know, see them again um, in the tournament time. Like you said, it's kind of going back and forth um, between them and Lexington. So, you know, this, especially this coaching staff, has a lot of respect for a lot of these coaches and teams that they played. And, you know, it's always nice to kind of get over the hump to some of these teams you've seen every year, you know, and make this long tournament run. Long throw in. Ended up right in front of the box, hitting the ground. Dangerous pass that time, but the Indians are able to send this one back up across midfield. But the Howland Tigers are still in control. So we saw the Indians have their time on the offense, put the pressure on it. Howland did a nice job, able to deny them their last trip down. But now it's the Tigers putting the pressure on the Indians' defense. Will they be able to hold? Caleb Miller with the nice kick. Slows it down, looks for a little bit of space. Try to get things moving forward. Looking for the cross into the box. This one a little bit behind the intended offensive player, but he's still able to track it down. Hua working against Shide. Shide once again playing great defense. He's come up big here in this first half so far. Able to send that one away. As you said, this, these Indians are struggling a little bit to gain possession, you know, kicking the ball right back out to the to the Howland Tigers team. Um, you know, see if they can kind of get back into the flow, you know, of maintaining possession, which they've been known for all season. Um, but this Howland team is kind of slowing the pace down, which is advantageous for them. You know, they don't want an up and down, especially with players like Ten Waldy and Austin Miller um, on the other end. So they're doing a good job kind of maintaining possession, trying to probe this Indians defense. And so far, this Indians defense has been up to the task. And we talked early going, a lot of back and forth and, and long kicks. No one really controlling the midfield. 
But here in the last four or five minutes, Howland's done a, Howland has done a nice job kind of taking that over, controlling that midfield, and put lots of pressure on this Indian D. You know, we mentioned, you know, we were talking about the tournament run and, you know, that played Lexington, you know, also failed to mention that game against Revere. Revere, number one in the state. So Shawnee has not had, you know, an easy draw. You know, there are no easy runs once you get this far into the tournament. And, and they have been tested. You know, Saturday, both these teams playing in 30-plus mile-an-hour winds, Miller crazy conditions. Couldn't ask for a more perfect night tonight to play some soccer. November in Ohio has been something else. You know, we're not going to complain. We don't want to jinx it. But it has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and, and tonight, uh, again, is no exception to that. But, you know, Saturday, a, a challenging game with a lot of different um, types of conditions that you're just not used to playing in. And Shawnee did a great job against the number one uh, team in the state in, in Revere, coming away with that victory. And, you know, obviously then here tonight playing against a very difficult Howland team. Yeah, definitely can't complain about the weather we have tonight. You know, as a soccer player, you know, you'd rather have this than 90-degree than weather, you know, playing. So, you know, both teams you know, are starting to settle in here as we see Howland just have a little bit more possession here, as you said, in the past four to five minutes and, you know, getting the ball into that box. But, you know, this defense has held still, and we'll see if um, the Indians can kind of gain back some of that momentum, um, which is one of the things that Coach Quatman, you know, sent us and talked a little bit about is just when that momentum shifts, can they capitalize? And right now, the momentum has definitely been on the Howland Tiger side. And now we're seeing another low kick. This time, Ten Waldy out to grab it. Nice play by Jack, Jack Tenwaldy. Tenwaldy with the pick up out, the goal. Grab that one. So now he's going to look to try to see if he can't flip the field. Nice long kick down to Sam Tenwaldy, but he's not able to win that 50-50 ball, but still ends up at the feet of McGuire. Now here's Austin Miller, going to work to the inside. He's going to send one, and that one's going to be in. Goal number two. You almost saw that one developing from up here. It, they were trying to take away the right for Austin Miller. He floated to the left, Go got the defender going, saw his gap, and it didn't Miller. take much for him to fit that in. Well, like you said, we could see it perfectly from our angle up here in the box. You knew what he was going to do, you know, bend that ball into the right corner. Yeah, it was a beauty. Indians on top, 2 nothing. We will step aside and be right back on the set. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken of Walpock and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. The Indians on top, 2 nothing after a beautiful goal by Austin Miller, that's his first goal, but he also has one assist as he was able to connect with Tenwaldy Howland, trying to answer quickly as they come down and the Indian defense it looked like that might have been Luca Casillo down there forcing that one out as the Tigers now are going to have a corner kick. And the Tigers taking no time after that second goal by the Indians team to really attack, to push opportunity here for those set pieces. Um, you know, it's really important. You know, especially for this Howland team, is to, to take advantage of those set pieces and you know leading so far tonight on the corner battle, but here comes Shawnee the other way. So Austin Miller come in off that corner kick and get a nice head header to send that one back upfield. Ten Wally was doing a great job as he led Luca Facillo up. Luca not able to be a little bit strong on that touch, couldn't quite get it to his teammate, but another opportunity as you're seeing. This Shawnee offense seems to be feeling a little bit of that momentum, trying to see if they can't take full advantage of it. Well, and what a great crowd we have. You know, we're on the, the side of the Shawnee Indians team, and, you know, th there's a lot of energy tonight, you know, trying to will this team on. You know, they got a lot to be excited about with this Indians team as they continue to battle, and kind of a miss kick there to give up another corner uh, to this Howland Tigers team. Corner so we'll see if this Tiger team can really take advantage you know, I think, believe this is the fourth or fifth corner of the night for this team. So, you know, we can see, you know, with Austin Miller coming back, you know, the importance of, of getting their size and getting their numbers back in the box to try to defend this. So they know defensively they got to protect, you know, their box, but also this Howland team wants to take advantage of these corners. Strong kick as he's able to get a nice cross on that corner kick, but Shawnee was right there to send it and 
you know, you can do things like that. You're not worried about Austin being too far back with a two goal lead. You know, you don't need to have to worry about a run out. You know, you still have Sam, Sam Tenwaldy staying back there. So when you're able to put 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six back there in the box and try to send some of those corner kicks away, that's a big benefit. Here comes another shot. Tenwaldy's able to track that one. That's going to be off target. So goal kick coming to the Indians. So you see Hallam really putting the pressure the on, trying to see if they the can't goal. get one on the board here. Still have just over 12 minutes left to go here in the first half, so we still have a lot of soccer to play. But Hunter Drury back in the game for Shawnee. Shawnee, they've had, they've had a couple of mistakes by the Howland Tigers, and they took full advantage of it. Well, you know the thing you were talking about, Austin Miller back, um, Luca Facillo back there on those corners, but this team is so fast. You know, when they counter, is they get the ball up quickly, as we see here. Here's another 1v1 with Austin Miller in that defense as another defender comes to help out. But they're just so quick and moving the ball up the field. And looks like they're going to call a foul on Austin Miller as he got a little aggressive as the ball got away from him. Leading into that, some good footwork by Austin Miller. He's able to put a nice soft touch on it to get around that defender. And that's what can make him so dangerous. He doesn't need a lot of space. If he's able to get that and get just a little bit of room, he's going to have another good clean shot. And, and he doesn't usually miss too many of them. So Howland does a nice job def defensively to make sure that he doesn't get the space he needs. As we're going to have a, another penalty, this time against the Tigers. Well, like you said, that was exactly what happened on that last goal. Just a little shit, you know, kind of shimmy to the left, touched it with his right foot onto his right foot, you know, and blasted it into the side netting, you know, on that last goal. So, like you said, doesn't need a whole lot of space to get a shot off. And, you know, really those, you know, top goal scorers, you know, you just give them a little bit, you know, they want to shoot and they want to put it on frame, and that's exactly what he did. So a fight on the far sideline, last touch by the Indians, throwing coming to the Tigers. Right up the sidelines. Played well off the chest to his teammate. Nice two-man game. Trying to work through a couple of Indian defenders. Looks like that was Colin Schein coming up. Excuse me. Yeah, Colin Schein comes up with it. Here's Austin Miller. Trying to work once again, but a great job by the defense coming up as we'll see who the official will give this one to. And they're going to say last touch by the Tigers. And now we see the middle official come in and say no he's going to reverse the call it's going to go back to the tigers mcguire with the header control tries to work through the dribble is able to work along that sideline it's going to be poked out Nine thirty left to go shawnee on top two nothing in this division two state semifinal. Winner will play Saturday night at Lower.com Stadium in Columbus at 7 o'clock. Here's Drury. Subbed into the game a couple of minutes ago. Lots of speed by Hunter Drury. They love having him come in and, and be able to have fresh legs. Him and you see Coda Miller also sub in quite frequently for the Indians. As they love the speed that those two can bring when they're on the field. A little bit of a misplay that time as it faded off to the right. And now the Howland Tigers are looking to take advantage. Well, and having that two goal lead too, we're starting to see Howland be a little bit more direct, trying to pressure, you know, or push the, the envelope a little bit against this back team. And that's exactly what this Indians team want is for teams to play balls into that back line and then they can attack uh, going forward. So this Howland team getting a little impatient, you know, being down 2 nothing. They know. You know, it's going to be hard to get back into this game. So um, they're being a little bit more direct in their play in this recent about four or five minutes. Here's Miller working one-on-one -on, -one on the far sideline. That one's going to go out. No, no signal yet. But they're going to Sam now Tenwaldi comes back in, in the last game touch for by the Tigers. As you see Sam Tenwaldi check back in. Luca Facillo, he's going to come off and take a break. Luca Facillo, another great, uh, another great player for this Indian team. Has great speed, great footwork as well. So Shai try to fit that in between a couple of defenders. Gets sent back out. 
Nothing but Indians right now on the defensive back line. So Caleb Miller going to gather that one in and get it back to his goalie. Jack Tenwaldi trying to work across the field that time to get it to Austin Miller. Ends up a little off target. Goes out. You know, we talked about we talked about Howland and you know how good this defense had been. The offense, you know, not quite what um, you know. The only 55 goals on the season. We talk about the Shawnee offense. You know, almost 100 goals on the season, right? A, a very prolific, offense. two very different offenses. Now, a lot of that can be predicated on you know schedule, who you play, you know, um, just what's necessary sometimes in games. But you know, the major contributor for this Tiger offense is Jack Kenny. 14 goals, 11 assists. We haven't really called his name much tonight. We've seen Herb Lawson, number 16, doing a lot of the heavy lifting. He has 10 goals of his own. He's tied for second. Luca Pacillo re-enters the game for Shawnee. You would think if you're Howland, you want to try to see if you can't get Kenny free and, and try to let him do what he's done so successfully all season. Yeah, and like you said, he has been very quiet on the night. Had a lot of success finding number two, Jet Hua. Um, on this team early on this right side as he's the one battling for the ball. But yeah, as you mentioned, you know, haven't haven't seen a whole lot of Jack Kenny yet tonight and you know kind of had a had a quiet game. We'll see, you know, especially maybe it, it takes that halftime to see if they can make some adjustments, you know, to find their leading scorer on the season. You can see that they've really been challenging that right side of the Shawnee uh, defense, but so far Colin Shine has been up for I'm sorry, Noah Shine has been up for that challenge. He's uh, worked very well against Lawson and, and also uh, Hua as he's been working on that side. So the defense has been up for the challenge, but now it's the offense. It's Ten Waldy trying to get the ball back as we see Drewy working down there as well. This one's going to be picked up. I believe that's McGuire as he's going to work quickly, tries to get through a couple of defenders. The Tigers are able to take this one away, but it's not too much on that pass as it ends up back at the feet of the Indians. Shai trying to chase it down. See if he can't get this one taken away, but Howland doing a nice job working along those sidelines. Nice interception. See Mateo Facillo, he's all over the field tonight. Does a lot of nice work in that midfield for the Indians. Uh, we're starting to see a little bit more space in that midfield now as teams are getting a little bit tired you know, on those legs. Um, neither team's made a whole lot of subs you know, especially Shawnee just once up. I believe for this Howland team, only one sub so far. So, you know, both teams and a good shot there. Um, by, I believe that Colin Noah Scheid. Scheid with a shot. Oh, Pat Lewis Noah Scheid. Scheid. Noah, Scheid. Um, Noah Scheid as he came all the way down from the defensive side. We don't see him too often down there that far offensively, but Howland gave him some room. He tried to put one in off the right foot. But Lewis able to come up with the save. Here's Miller. Almost right on cue, always down there on the defensive side, getting his foot on the ball. Four minutes, go black. Four minutes left to go here in the first half. Shawnee on top, 2 nothing. Trying to see if they can't keep Howland off the board. You see Miller send this one away. It's going to go out, so throw in coming for the Tigers. Connor Gebhardt and Keaton Perry are the game Miller's for the Tigers. Back Austin Miller game. back Hunter in Drew for Lima. Take a seat. Well, I think we see the strategy of Shawnee is, you know, we want to, to, to maintain kind of our legs, you know, throughout this, especially our attacking players. So especially with, with Hunter Drury coming in off the bench, kind of being that sub, giving those time, get, giving those top guys some time to get a little bit of rest so they can go at full pace, um, you know, but really the only sub, you know, for Shawnee. So, you know, most of these players have played um, this entire half. And we're starting to see that, I guess, on both teams, a little bit of tired legs, a little bit more space in the middle um, of the pitch. And um, we'll see if any team can kind of maintain possession and use that to their advantage. Yeah, well, we haven't seen it in any substitutions from the Tigers. And that's one of the benefits of getting out here, getting off to a quick start, put one goal in you know, within the first 10 minutes, and the second goal also. As you see Austin Miller on those fresh legs, as he has this one poked away, though, and sent downfield around, mid, around the midfield. But you know, Shawnee has that luxury. Up two nothing, you can be a little bit more conservative. You can pull some guys out. Um, you, you don't have to press quite as hard, and that only benefits you the later this game moves on. And you know, obviously, you know, you're trying to get the clock to run down. You can have a, a little, 
the fresher guys out there, and that can be a big advantage. Here's Vasilo. Luca gets it over to Mateo. As Mateo gets pushed in the back. We have a couple of whistles, and we're going to have, I believe, another yellow card. Yellow card issued against the nine. Pasquale Carinante for this Howland Tigers team. So each team has one card so far in this first half. Carinante is going to have to take a seat. He picks up the yellow card. We saw the push in Dimitri the back Jensen against Vasillo. You, know, you got to give the officials credit. They're taking control of this game. They're, they're being consistent on both sides with the whistles. They don't want extras. You know, I, you know, sometimes you get into these and the officials, you made it this far. These are the state semis. You know, this is, you know, we're going to make sure that this game is played the way that it needs to be. So uh, this one sent in just out of the reach. And, oh, then it goes into the center. We have some whistles that time as you see Tenwaldy hands up. <laughs> Not me. Yep. I'm, I'm getting out of this. I didn't, I didn't touch him. <laughs> nope. As they Look wanted to make sure they weren't interfering with the goalie with the that time. As Goal saw Austin up. Miller get way up there, but not quite able to get his head on it. Well, I believe the official just called an offsides. That was the call. Um, looked like maybe Austin Miller may have went a little bit earlier. And the official called a offside, so really the first one of the night. Mateo Facillo comes in, intercepts the ball. He's going to move to the field. He's got one to the right, one to the left. He's going to get it to the left to Austin Miller. A little bit of contact that time, but Miller able to take it back. He's going to feed Tenwaldy, working against that left channel. That one gets poked away. Miller, he's going to take it right back, though. As we're going to have more contact. And Shawnee's going to have an excellent opportunity here to see if they can add to their score. As you saw, number 16, Herb Lawson, come in and try to cut right underneath uh, Austin to get that ball away. He's able to poke it away slightly, but his teammate comes in a little bit too much contact. And now we're going to have a free kick for the Indians. One minute remaining in the first half. One minute. Caleb Miller scored a goal from just about this same position in the district final. It's going to be either him or Luca Facillo taking this kick. See which one's it's going to be. It's going to be the left-footed Facillo. No, it's not. Here comes Miller. He's going to send it in. He bends it, but a little bit too much on that one as that's going to go out in a goal kick. For the Caleb Miller's shot high and wide. Only 30 seconds left to go here in the first half. I imagine the Tigers they're going to try to go very quickly here, or they're just going to want to make sure that the Indians don't get another shot on goal before they head to the locker room. This one goes deep. It's going to be headed out by Miller. And here's Kenny. Ten, nine, Kenny gets it. Eight, seven, that sideline going to look for the cross. Five, four, five seconds left to go. Three, Shawnee's going to boot two, it, and that is one. going to bring us to halftime. Half. The Shawnee Indian offense stands tall in the first half as Sam Tenwaldy comes up with the goal. And his teammate Austin Miller comes up with the second one. And the Indians take it. Fans, that is the end of the first half of the Shawnee Indians leading the Maryland Tigers by a score of 2 to 0. We'll have the second half right here on the OSN. Board is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Walpock and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah St Stober as we are here at Clear Fork High School for the Division II State Semifinals. And Josiah, first half, you know, we weren't quite sure what we were going to see. You know, we were looking forward to seeing that Shawnee offense against that stout Howland defense, and at least in that first half, it made it Shawnee. Report. Also, tonight's game will be rebroadcast on WOSN Thursday night at 8 p.m. Yeah, we talked about the senior leadership from the Shawnee Indians as they have once again come through for this team. I mean, they have, they've had a remarkable run 
from their freshman year on. They've seen a lot of success at the regional level. We mentioned that this Howland team uh, knocked them out of the state semis two years ago. So you know that these seniors feel like there's a little bit of unfinished business, but we still have 40 minutes of soccer to go. Howland is not going to give up. It'll be very interesting. We saw kind of towards the back half of that first half, they really stepped their pressure up, really put it towards that Shawnee defense. Yeah, well, an opportunity for halftime for the coaches to kind of calm their guys down, you know, kind of go over some of the things that they've been probably focusing on all week at practice um, leading up to this game. You know, so we'll see if, you know, Shawnee can kind of weather the storm here, you know, and seeing what um, some of those little tweaks the coaching staff from Howland made to see if they can get their guys back into this game. I would expect we'd see a little bit more of Jack Kenny this half for the Howland Tigers. As he is the leading goal scorer for it. Uh, for Howland, but you know, pretty quiet there in the first half. Only saw him uh, a couple of times. Nothing real clear getting towards the goal for him. Shawnee did a nice job of bottling him up. Throw in coming for the Tigers on the far sideline. As now they're going to switch on the throw in. I think one of those adjustments kind of early, you know, noticing is Jack Kenny for this Howland Tigers team. Started off on that left side. Oh, and an early goal from Howland. I believe it was Jack Kenny. Maybe got another touch by his teammate, but early goal here for this Howland Tigers team. That is huge for Howland as they weren't able to get going there in that first half, but off of a long throw in. So that kind of happened a couple of times in the first half where that ball had actually fallen in front of the goal, but Shawnee able to clean it up. That time, not able to get a foot on it. Howland takes advantage. Goal scored by Howland. Score two to one. Well, and even just those little inches, you know, in soccer, you know, we've seen Austin Miller come back on those corners, but with it being a throw in, he stayed up top, wasn't able to use some of his size to advantage to clear that ball. And we see the Howland take advantage of that kind of misstep here on strategy, you know, and, and be able to, to get themselves right back into this game. Howland defense is a nice job that time to Sam Tenwald. He looked like he had a streaking Austin Miller up the middle of the field. He will take that one away, and immediately here comes Hua. He has that one taken away from behind. Mateo Facilla going to change direction. Comes into the middle of the field, sends this one up to Tenwald. Tenwald is going to try to track it down, gets it going, but they're going to have a whistle, and they're going to say offsides on the Indians. Shawnee misses an opportunity there as Ted Moldy a couple of steps behind on that feed in. And had ended up putting it in the goal. But the officials say too much of an advantage. And we're going to have a free kick for the Tigers. Long kick right down the middle. This one's going to be headed back up. Luca Facilla, he's going to play it, sends it up high. Who has been busy? Nice footwork working it through, but had it poked away. This one's going to get sent over to Tenwald. He's going to head it backwards. He's going to grow harmlessly to the feet of the Howland Tigers. Both teams trying to make some adjustments. We see you know, little tweaks from, from both teams from where they played and started in this first half. And, so far, Howland has kind of taken advantage of this Indians team on the defensive end. And once again here, we have another player driving at that back line of this Indians team and still have maintain possession. Here, really come out with a 
pressure like that looks. Yeah, I almost wonder. So sometimes you can almost get a little too comfortable, especially when you have a little big game with a lot of soccer left to play. We'll see if this Indian defense can kind of wake up a little bit. Well, one difference for this Holland team early is Jack Kenny has had a lot more touches here than he had in that first half. They start him up top in the nine position as the ball ricochets off his back there. But they started him in the nine. He's getting a lot more touches, a lot more um, opportunities to be aggressive early on. And so far, it's worked. Hey, come on! Luca Basilo with a shot high. Yeah, that found himself in a little bit of space there from about 30 yards out and you know, definitely has the ability to strike the ball from that, that range and just a little bit too hard and goes into the goalpost. Just under 34 minutes left to go here in the game. Sean puts out 2 1. Hamlin comes out here early in the second half, able to put one on the board to get, get that zero off of the scoreboard. Still looking for the equalizer. Kenny working on the far sideline. That's it taken away. McGuire. Good feed Neff. Neff's going to go over the sideline, trying to find Miller. Miller's going to get it. He's going to work. Trying to make the defense make the first move. This one's going to get poked out. Stay with the Indians. Baker is getting a little aggressive down here for the Tigers, overrunning. That could have been dangerous, but defense did a nice job of not falling for anything that Austin Miller was trying to do that time, kept him in front of him. Now they're going to have an opportunity with the throw. Wire plays it to Miller. Miller trying to get a little bit of space against three Tigers, has this one taken away. Working against Luca Facillo. Tries to send it. Looks like a wire, but they want to get a foot on it. And a great foot for Miller as he was able to use his heel to get it through the legs of the defender. Almost a beautiful opportunity for Mateo Facillo. Allen does a good job to send that one out. Yeah, what a pass there by Austin Miller. A little heel kick through the legs of the defender and just wasn't able to connect um, with his teammate there. But, you know, we kind of see a little bit of the adjustments too by this Indians team. Austin Miller starting here on the right side, played on the left side for the majority of the first half. So the coaching staff for this Indians team must have saw something in the first half that they think they can take advantage of here with Austin on the right side. Good, strong throw in. Austin Miller was trying to get ahead on it. 
not able to do this one as the Tigers are going to set this one up to midfield. Yeah, he's going to grab gather the Andrew. Hunter Drury into the game for Lima. Yeah, lack, lacks a days could pass there by Noah Neth. Is, was able to find his teammate, which his teammate was open early, but just not enough pace on his path. And, and one of those uh, passes that you know, coaches cringe at, you know, those square balls, you know, if they get taken away, put your defense in a tough spot. But another foul there on this Howland Tigers defense. Gives Shawnee a uh, free kick. Baker is trying to get the header as he tried to go through Hunter Drury that time to pick up the whistles. Looks like the left-footed Luca Facillo waiting to take the free kick as everybody gets in position. As you see the officials positioning everybody. Luca's going to send it into the box and a little bit too much on that one. That was a dangerous play that time. Almost got over the outstretched arms of Lewis. Lewis doing a nice job where he was at. As he, he must have said that that touched the top of the foot. Uh, the goal first before it hit the goal post. As you saw the sideline wanting the corner kick, thinking that Jack Lewis had knocked that one over the top of the goal. Silla works on the far sideline. He's able to split the defense. Goes against the third. Here's a fourth. As we have an official whistle this time, and it's going to be a free kick. So another one of those play on whistles that time, as you mentioned earlier in that first half, not wanting to stop the momentum of the Indians. You just see the skill of some of these Shawnee Indians players, you know, taking on two, three, four um, defenders. And Luca almost got through, but the official saw called the foul previously, saw that the ball was turned over, and um, gives the ball back to this Indians team. Now Luca just going to drop it over to Shai. Shai going to work up, look for the cross. Not able to get a clean foot on it. It's going to go out. And is that going to be a corner for the Indians? It looks Austin like Miller it is. back in the game Miller for Shawnee. Back in. And this is going to be, I believe, the first corner opportunity for the Indians tonight. So we'll see what they're able to do with it. So dangerous with these as you have Austin Miller in the middle, a couple other guys, including Sam Tenwaldy, kind of lurking on the outside of the box to try to put this one back in. Luca's going to send it. Not a good kick on that one. As he's going to be frustrated with himself on that opportunity, but now he has a chance for a cross. He's going to send this one a better look as it's going to end up at the feet of Tenwaldy. Tenwaldy not able to get a clean look on it. We'll see who is last touched, and it's going to be last touched on the Tigers. So now. An opportunity for a corner kick on the opposite side. Upcoming corner you kick gotta for think Johnny. that you know Luca Facillo is thinking he's gonna put a much better kick on this time. Yes, definitely want to try to find Austin Miller's head as you know almost had it on that last one. You know, about half a foot too high and falls right to Jack Tenwaldi and but another corner, another opportunity for this Indians team. And we had a whistle prior to the save, but either way, it's gonna end up in no goal. And that's, corners from that side are so dangerous and they're so beneficial for Shawnee because Luca's a left-footed kicker. That's his strong foot. He kicks that one. He gets the natural bend going towards the goal. But that time, the keeper made a nice move to come out and save that one. So now it's Shawnee working in through the midfield. Trying to see if they can't get back and put some pressure on the offense. Nice job by McGuire letting the defender slide right by. Now here's Pasillo. He's trying to get Austin Miller into open space. Works along that sideline. And it's going to go out. Last touch by the Tigers. The Indians are going to have a throw in. Yeah, good defense there from the Holland Tigers. as not allowing Austin Miller to get by them. But you know, just like once, like you said earlier, just some, some really good skill <laughs> you know, from these Indians players. You can tell they've played a lot of soccer. They've had the, feet, the, the ball at their feet. For, for a long time. So we're just seeing a lot of skill out here tonight. And, you know, an opportunity there by Austin Miller. Finally found him on his head. Just Austin pushes Miller the ball right a little bit right to the post. That time he had to be lined up a little bit farther outside of the goal than I think he wanted. Was hoping to kind of try to back head it a little bit at a different angle. But 
Ends up going out for a goal kick. As the Tigers are going to look to see if they can't flip the field here. A little bit of shorter kick, and Luca Facillo comes up, tries to get the challenge, not able to get the ball, but still did enough to make sure that they didn't go too deep. This one's going to be played to Austin. Austin. It's going to come right back to him. Going to be defended by two Tigers. Try to sidekick to get through that defense, but nice job by the Tigers to stay disciplined and not bite on it. Here's Gentis working against the Indians. This one's going to get poked out. Throw in coming to the Tigers. Makeris. Long throw in along the sidelines. 50-50 ball. Going to go out. Going to say last touch by the Indians. So the Tigers right now just working that sideline. Trying to get quick throw ins. And now it's going to go back to the Indians. See Gentis right there to send that one back for the Tigers. Here's Kenny. Kenny trying to work on that left side. Works through a couple of defenders. Still trying to battle for it. Good footwork by Kenny. Once again, this Tigers team has this throw in. You know, it's what they scored on, you know, about two minutes into this second half. So we'll see if they made an adjustment now here. Once again, they put Austin Miller back in that box to use his height and once again blast the ball out with that clean header. Austin, one more time, using his size, able to get his head on the ball, trying to send this one away. Because you got to think, as you saw Austin come back that time, if Coach Quadman had to do it all over again, he'd have made sure Austin was back on that last throw in. Is when you have somebody that can throw the ball that far on those sidelines, that is a huge advantage. Just like having a corner kick, you know, on throw ins, as you see him come loose, and Jack Tenwald is going to come in and stops the advance of Gentis. But yeah, when you, like we were saying, if you, can, if you have somebody that can throw the ball that far on a throw in, especially at that part of the field, that is a huge advantage. You know, obviously, you know, Howland knows what they have. They know the strength of that throw in, and they set that one up beautifully to get themselves on the board. So you got to think anytime that they can have a throw in on that side of the field, they're obviously going to look for it, but Shawnee made the adjustment. Austin was down there, and now the offense is going to get another opportunity. Yeah, there's not many times in the game of soccer where you can necessarily call a play, you know, but those times when there's free kicks, there's times there's corners, those long throw-ins gives your team an opportunity, you know, the kind of things you practice, you know, those set pieces that you practice, and, you know, it, this Howland team took advantage of it, you know, but this is a game where you got to make adjustments. And this Shawnee staff saw that. Once again, Austin Miller gets back as quickly as he can. Saw Mateo Facillo that time able to knock that one down and try to see if he couldn't get a good shot on goal, but sent it too high. So the long kick around midfield by the Tigers. The Tigers working through that midfield. Nice touch by the Tigers. Going to send this one forward. Going to have a fight for the loose ball. And this one just over the top of the goal. Dangerous, dangerous ball for the Indians. And what an opportunity that the Tigers had on that play, but they couldn't cash in. Caleb Rose with a shot high of the goal. Caleb Rose somehow had come clean and through two Shawnee defenders. Was able to get a great look at it. Couldn't quite get it to go in. I think if that ball would have went in, the Shawnee coaching staff might have been a little frustrated. Looked like there might have been a handling um, on that um, possession. The ball got held up and looked like it was controlled, but no call on the officials, and here comes Howland right back at it. And the pressure from this offense of Howland, you know, they have made the adjustment. They have anything that, you know, any, anybody who thought that maybe this offense, you know, wouldn't be as dangerous or potent. Obviously, I hadn't seen them, but here's Austin Miller looking for the cross, sends it over. Tenwaldi as it goes off the top of the off of the goal post and gets the back of the net. And that's what, you know, just I, I coach the cross in, in the spring. Austin and we call those mommy goals. When in lacrosse, you go quick, you throw it, everybody thinks it's a goal because they see the net move. 
And no, it's because it gets everybody up in the fans. <laughs> all, all the moms the get very excited because they think they've seen a goal. And we, so we just saw one right there. It was a great look. Austin did a great job. It's, he, he might be limping a little bit as he's going to have to come off of the field. And, and Sam Tenwald, he was right there to put it in, but just couldn't quite get the chip shot in. So both teams here have exchanged incredible opportunities on the offensive end, but haven't been able to cash in. The Indians stay on top, two to one. Well, and as you mentioned, what a take there by Austin Miller as he drove towards the end line. And, you know, for a lot of young players that are watching that, you know, you want to drive that end line because it forces your defense to be flat. And then also, there's no offside. So he took on two or three defenders, drove that end line, then put a great cross in the box. And as you say, Jack Tenwaldi, I'm sorry, um, his teammate just wasn't able to, to finish it. As you said, you know, the, the fans were up and cheering, you know, just but just went a little bit high. Yeah, it's Sam had Sam Tenwaldi. Sam Tenwaldi was down there for Shawnee. You know, we were talking early in the game, he had stepped up huge in this tournament run. Always seems to be in the right position, was there one more time, couldn't get that one to go. So now the defense is gonna have to hang tough. Pua works on that opposite side. At least I believe that's who it mentioned we're a little far away from them once they get to that side of the field but ends up getting poked away so we're going to have a corner, corner i believe corner kick, tigers. so with no austin miller in there so we'll see if this howland team can take advantage of this last time this opportunity arose howland's able to put one in and this time not a great entry kick as this one gets headed back out but able to track it back down where the tigers another one into the box gets headed right back out howland able to control it at their feet it's going to poke through, and this one's going to get sent deep. Another long kick towards the middle, headed back out. As this Shawnee defense is doing a nice job of getting to those balls when they're in the air and to send them back the other way. Pua trying to control on the far sideline, has it taken away. Here's Luca Facillo. Facillo. Works back towards the middle. Trying to take a little bit of time, seeing if he can't get his offensive space a little bit. Looking for some alleys. So Shawnee just going to kick it back. Happy right now to run a little bit of clock. And this one's going to get taken away as Neff a little bit too strong on that touch. 18.30 left to go. Neff fighting along that far side against Kenny. Kenny's going to put the brakes on. He's going to look for that kick with the right foot. This one's going to get sent back through. McGuire does a nice job to get that one away. Facillo, great speed. That yeah, He possesses great speed. This one's going to go along that far side as he works up the channel. As we have some contact, a Tiger defender ends up down, and the officials are going to say too much contact by Facillo. Quick restart by the Tigers. Starting to see a little bit more space here. As both teams are looking to attack and counter. So we get another foul there. Looks like there might be a card, or at least maybe a talking to, but the official pulls out and drops the yellow card. But the second yellow of the night for this Howland Tigers team. I believe it's number 18, Jack Kenny. And that's what it looks like to me. So Kenny with his first yellow of the Howard night. The he's going to have Tigers. to come out. He immediately goes over to the sideline, though, as they're going to want to sub him back in as soon as they can. 17.40 left to go here in the game. Shawnee on top, 2-1. With a trip to the state finals on the line. See Austin Miller checking back into the game. The same 10 wall is going to come out. Can't imagine he's going to be out too long because he's just going to get a little bit of water, get his breath a little Austin bit. Miller I imagine we're going to see him back on the line here very quickly. This one's going to get poked out. It's going to stay with the Tigers. Well, Connor Gebhardt was the one. Jack Kenny back in the game time. for Howland. Long throw in coming. Gentis. Excuse me, it was the Bakeris. The long throw. Wire able to track that one in. Drops it off to Shine, who's going to send it back up. 
looking for Miller rounding around midfield. But the Tigers are able to control. Here's Kenny as he's come back into the game. He's going to feed it into the middle. And we're going to have a handball. It's going to go back to the Indians. Well, the Indians are doing a lot better job with Jack Kenny. They made a little bit of adjustment. He's a natural lefty, likes to go to his left. So we're starting to see some of those um, you know, strategy playing out here where you know, they're keeping him, forcing him to his right, making him play difficult balls with his off foot and uh, having a lot of success here lately, last four or five minutes of this game. So a big kick that time by Jack Tenwald. He almost found a streaking Austin Miller, not quite able to gather that one in. Right now, Shawnee doing a good job in the midfield. This one's going to come up and get poked away. Gets poked up, up, up in the air as Caleb Miller's looking for a little bit of space. Another high kick as Baker gets his head on this one but sends it out. So throw in coming for the Indians. 15.45 left to go in the game. Looking for Austin Miller one more time. Not quite able to connect as Austin was trying to head it back towards the middle of the field. A little bit of spin on that one, ends up out. So Bakerus one more time on the throw in. Silla does a nice job of controlling it, head then chest over to Miller. Miller playing it at his feet. Here's McGuire now, middle of the field, trying to decide what he wanted to do with it. Luca trying to work around, but. Looks like a little bit too much hand contact that time, a little bit of grabbing. So the Tigers trying to go with a quick restart, send it way down to Kenny. Kenny's going to work. If Caleb Miller comes up, challenges. Kenny has to pull it back out. See Neff playing good defense that time on Gentis. And you can see right now the Tiger strategy is a lot like the Indian strategy on those throw-ins. They're just trying to get it at the feet of, of Kenny as the Indians are trying to get it at the feet of Miller and trying to let those guys go to work. Going to have a handball this time as it's going to go out. So Mateo Facello, back in for the Indians. he's going to have the throw-in. As we see Sam Tenwaldi come back in as Hunter Drury checks out of the game. Neff comes from all the way into the defensive back to take that throw in. McGuire looking for the touch to Tenwaldi. Tenwaldi back to McGuire. McGuire, nice little feed. Gets it just over the top of the goal as Shawnee had a good opportunity there. Great look by all three of those guys down there. And it couldn't quite get it in. And Howland wasting no time as Jack Lewis quickly gets the ball back in that play for the Tigers. With that last shot on goal. Yeah, and what a pass there by Sam Tenwaldi is, you know, as you talked about earlier, is just how familiar these players are with each other, given that one-two ball, knowing his teammate was going to be making that run. And unfortunately, you know, kind of off balance, plays the ball a little bit too high. And we've seen that a couple times from this Indians team. No challenge that time, so they were letting Howland get very deep into it. And have a lot of traffic in front of the goal. Jack Tenwally, the goalie, way out of position. You see a couple of Shawnee Indians get back there to make sure they got him covered. Great team defense by the Indians on that possession. Well, and here we go with a counter. And the man you want to have the ball, Austin Miller, but just plays it a little bit too long, but forces this Howling team to get back on defense. You know, with a lot of space, so kind of switch the field. A lot of nervous hands down here, um, you know, from the Shawnee team. This Howland team, two or three shots, but the goalkeeper Jack Tenwaldi did a great job pressuring that ball, coming off of his line, not giving him that opportunity, and also with the help of some of his teammates. Played to Austin Miller as he has two defenders on him. He's going to cross, keep us on the ground this time. This one's going to get poked away. McGuire comes over, tries to get it. Allen does a nice job of setting this one back up. Shy trying to fight for the ball. Because right now, Allen, this defense is just not letting the Indians get any breath. They're not trying to let them slow down at all. And that's what makes this such a tough defense to score. Kenny going to feed it back up to the middle. Now they're going to send everybody back on the defensive side. Nice feed.
feet. Here comes Austin Miller. They got even numbers and see what they're able to do with it. Good touch on the inside. And they're going to say offsides. It looks like that is going to be the call. As the ball is going to go back to the Tigers. Offsides the call that again, was an Johnny. awful close call that time. As I believe that was Hunter Drury. And they looked like they were step for step. But the official says that he had the slight advantage. The ball's going back the other way now. Both teams playing the ball very quickly off of these restarts, trying to catch the opposing defense. You know, kind of out of position, but so far the defenses have been up to the challenge, making sure they're getting numbers back, putting numbers behind the ball. Gentis gonna split the two defenders trying to get it over to Kenny. And that one's gonna get sent out. Another one of these opportunities for this Howland Tigers team for these long throws as we see Austin Miller and almost every Indian is in the box besides Luca Facillo. Here comes the long throw and good spin on the ball as well. This one's gonna get kicked out. Who's gonna clear it? It's gonna be the Indians. You get so much spin on that ball on the throw, and you can see it from all the way up here. Makes it so hard to tell where that's going to go when it comes off of a head or a foot. Just another one of those elements that makes those throw-ins so dangerous. So now the Tigers looking for the cross. They're on the far sideline. Good challenge by Scheid, though. And Scheid's played a really good game tonight. Haven't called his name a whole lot here in the, the second half, but... Early in that first half, he was challenged, and he rose to the challenge every single time, and I believe they got a, another corner here. Yes, corner they do. Upcoming challenge for down there at the bottom. Looked like it was going to go out on the Tigers, but they say last touch by the Indians. So here comes the corner, under 10 to play in the game. Dangerous ball that time, but sent back the other way by Colin Shai. Luca Facillo going to try to use his speed. Gets back up to the middle. He's got a couple of defenders chasing him. Drops it off to Drury. Drury almost turns the ball over there. But fortunate for this Indians team, goes back to the Indians and once again trying to find Drury up top as he's dispossessed. See Drury comes up limping a couple of times. He's taken a lot of contact tonight. Been able to play through it. Talon does a nice job working that sideline to keep it in. Austin Miller trying to play it off of his chest. He's got three Tigers that he's working against. Allen comes up with it. Austin goes down. Great slide, though, that time as Colin Scheid comes in to take that one away. As you see, Mateo trying to feed Drury on the inside, but not able to connect on that one. As here comes the Tigers with 8.30 left to go in the game. Caleb Miller. And here we're going to have a whistle. This one's going to be on Kenny. Is that? Let's see what they're going to do, and they're not going to pull it. Yeah, it almost looked like the it, official was going went, towards his pocket. That would yeah. have been devastating for this Howland team as Kenny already has one yellow. I, I, I thought the same thing you did. I saw the official going for that pocket. I thought we were going to see a second yellow card, but they're going to say no, and it's just going to be a free kick for the Indians. Under eight left to play in the game. Shawnee on top, 2-1. Allen trying to get things going offensively to try to get this one uh, all tied at two. Long kick coming by Scheid. As we're going to have a whistle as Drury gets tangled up down there. Drury looks like he's a little banged <laughs> up as he's limping around grabbing. He's trying to gut through it. As you see Tenwoldy on the line waiting to come back in. Shawnee coaches are urging their fa home fans to get up and try to get some momentum here. Tigers looking for the cross, but good defense by the Indians to send this one out. And the throw in's going to go to Shawnee. So that is going to be advantage, Shawnee, not just for the throw in, but they're going to get an opportunity to get Sam Tenwaldi back into the game. As Drury, who has Sam played Tenwaldi valiantly, has taken a lot of bumps. Kid has definitely been banged up tonight. He stayed in and tried to do everything he could to help his team. He's going to come off. Now 
Howland trying to control this ball. They know they need one to tie it at least. Here comes Gentis, going to drop it off. Going to have a fight in the middle. Going to be an easy save that time for Jack Tenwell. He's going to fall over onto it. After Shawnee, you're going to take the opposite approach. I would imagine you're going to try to take as much time off this clock as possible. Jack Tenwald, he trying to get it down to his brother Sam, but not able to catch up with it. This one's going to get headed by the keeper. Bakers, he's going to work now. Drops it off to Gentis. Shawnee has this 2-1 lead, and I think it's so against their nature to slow the, slow the game down because they just want to attack, possess, see if they can push it up the field, and we'll see if they maintain a little bit of possession here as the ball falls back to them, but... Looks like a kick out by Howland and down to Austin Miller. Here goes Austin. He's going to try to split that defense. He's got the speed to do it. He's going to get tripped up. They're going to say no foul that time. So they're going to have to get up quick, get back on the defensive side as Tim Early will stay down. Austin Miller trailing the play. He's able to catch up and get back down with the defense. Deep shot into the box. It's going to be off. We're going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. There's not going to be any whistle. They're going to let him play on. But here comes another charge by the Tigers. And one more time, a great play by Noah Scheid. 5.20 left to go in the game. Another deep kick into the box. 50-50 ball up for grabs. It's going to be controlled by the Indians. Miller going to feed it up. And now it's over to Tenwaldi. And a great ball there to Tenwaldi. Push it out wide. Pass that defense, and we'll see if Tenwaldi takes his time there and a little bit of heavy touch and ball back to this Tigers team. I think one thing we're noticing, though, is there are some tired bodies out there. We're starting to see a little bit of drag getting back, you know, maybe not pushing up as high up the field because, you know, legs are a little bit heavy. As we said, neither team here. It looks like we got them on side. One more great save by Jack Lewis. Another good opportunity, a good feed into the box. I believe that was Mateo Facillo who had to look and couldn't quite sneak it past the keeper. As you see Lewis run out to gather that one in for the Tigers. So, you know, and what you, you know, back to what you're saying about you know, these tired legs, you're seeing the burst still, but the recovery is not nearly what it was. They're still trying to get out there, trying to push it, but when that burst is over, you, you can tell it's taken them a minute to get that recovery and try to get back in. Opportunity here for this Tigers team to put the ball in the box. As we're starting to see some of these attacking players, Austin Miller dropping back, Luca Facilla dropping back. Some of these players that are typically up top are getting back to help their defenders. Under four left to play in the game. Shawnee defense trying to stop everything coming even close. Good ball is going to get sent back over onto the Tigers' side, but Jack Lewis is going to send this one back deep for Howland. Here's Austin Miller. Gets it over to McGuire. This one's going to get taken away by the Tigers. They're going to work back to the middle, trying to give and go that time. It's going to get poked out, though. You see Howland doing everything they can, trying to get it back to Kenny. Kenny had a good look that time, but it's gets set back one more time by the defense. Under three left to play. Shawnee defense standing tall. And the Howland offense is being relentless, sending everything they can at him. Luca Facilla not able to get this one. This one's going to send up, going over the top of the goal. And we're going to have a goal kick. Well, what a shot there by Pasquale Caranante for this Tigers team. Has found himself in a little bit of space. Tried to play that outside of his foot shot with his left. And just a little bit high, but this Indians team is satisfied with just blasting the ball, wasting time here. 2.22 left on the clock. Not one of Jack Tenwaldi's better goal kicks tonight, but it still was able to get the ball down on the other side of the field. As right now, they're just trying to get this clock to on their side, see if they can't ride this last two minutes out. Good feed this time coming in. Tenwaldi's going to gather this one in. We've reached the two-minute mark of the second half. As Tenwaldi now is going to pick it up, start the clock. Faithful. 
Alamo on their feet. They can sense that state final berth, but they know that their team's got to hold strong here for the last minute 40. Neff is able to get in the way of that one, knocks it away. Here's Kenny. They're going to put two on him as the defenders are going to try to get away from him. Good poke away that time. Kyle inside. This one comes. Nice. It's going to be a ricochet. And a dangerous ball that time that got kind of bumped around, and those sometimes can be the most dangerous, but Shawnee able to get that one out. Here comes, they're going to send another one into the box. This one's going to get headed out. Long kick. Gets it over to Jack Lewis. Lewis playing deep out of the goal right now. They're not trying to let anything get through. One minute left to go in the game. Jensis going to send it over. Another long kick up to around midfield. Penwaldy trying to fight for it. This one's going to get booted out. Indians on the throw in. 40 seconds left to go. There should be no rush from this Indian team to get the ball in. They're just going to try to throw this as far and as uh, long and as away from danger as they possibly can. 25 seconds left to go for the Indians. Allen trying everything they can to get one more good shot on goal, but this one's going to get set. Final 15 seconds, deep kick for Howland. This is dangerous. Tenwaldy able to grab, grab it, falls on it. 10 seconds left to go. The Shawnee Indians are going to walk away with the 2-1 victory, and they will play for a state title Saturday night at Lower.com Field in Columbus. As you see the jubilation from the sidelines, Shawnee brought a heck of a crowd with them tonight. The student section filing out, celebrating with the team. Coaching staff, everybody so excited for this opportunity as Shawnee has avenged the 2020 loss to Howland as they now are going to take a trip to the state finals. Um, congratulations to this Shawnee Indians team. Now, took two goals early in the first half to maintain this lead. They gave up a goal early in the second half. But that stout defense held true tonight, this kept this Howland Indians, uh, Howland Tigers team at bay after that goal. You know, what a great overall win, setting themselves up for a state final opportunity. Congratulations to the Howland Tigers on a fantastic season. Nothing to hang their heads about. I know they fell a couple of games short of where they wanted to be, but making it to the state's finals, being one of the last four teams in Division II is a heck of accomplishment. Taking a look at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard one final time, the Shawnee Indians are going to come away victorious 2-1. to one. They are moving on to the state championships, which will be played a Saturday night at Lower.com Field at 7 p.m. Josiah, we had a heck of a game. We knew it was going to be coming in. Shawnee has continued their incredible run this year. These seniors do not want things to end yet after everything they've accomplished. They still have one more to go. Yeah, and as you said, these seniors have been leading this team all year long. Goal by Sam Tenwaldi early in the game. A second one by Austin Miller. You know, it's just been not only just these seniors, but just an all-around team effort as we saw tonight. Great defensive back four from the Shawnee team. You know, we know about the attack going forward, but overall, just a quality win, a great win for this Shawnee Indians program. And, you know, looking forward to see him in the championship game. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Clear Fork High School. One final time, the Shawnee Indians move on to play for a state title, 2-1. to one. Richard Dias over. I am Nate Garlock. Have a great night, everybody. Welcome back to Clear Fork. We're being joined by Coach Quadman. And Coach, congratulations. A huge victory tonight. Had to feel good. Offense came out right away and took it to this really tough Howland defense. How good did it feel to see those early goals? <laughs> yeah, you know, they're a blessing and a curse a little bit because you get up one and, and we were really clicking offensively. I'd love to have kept that momentum the whole game. Uh, but we all kind of know everyone flinches a little bit and you get a little conservative in your play. And, and you know, that we came out, I don't want to say flat, but I think we were trying to protect that golden egg of two goals. and. Um, that wasn't the game plan, but that's what we kind of did. And, and Howland really gave us, uh, they gave us a workout in the second half. 
you're talking about the second half coming out. You had that two-goal lead, give up the one right away. How about that resiliency of your defense? You know, a lot of teams you could see, you know, would maybe start crumbling, start panicking. You guys stood tall even in the face of that early goal. I think in the last three games we've played, we've been down 1-0. So we kind of know how to play with our backs against the wall a little bit. And, and, you know, we're not used to really playing with a lead in the last couple games. So it was kind of nice to have to have that sort of cushion a little bit and to be able to be a little conservative. And, um, you know, they, they came out guns a-blazing. They, they, were, they, were, they were hungry. You know, we talked uh, during the broadcast a little bit about maybe ghosts of tournament past, the teams that you guys have played on this run, to be kind of exercise some, some, some losses that you guys have had in, in previous. And now you guys get an opportunity to kind of get all of those wins back and now an opportunity to play for the state title. How does that feel? Was Peter up there with you? No, it was okay. Okay, it was okay. That was funny. That's funny. The ghost. Of, yeah. You know, I don't know how many guys were in that run with us on, on our team that remember it, but I, I reminded them and, you know, I, I kind of said something I'd like to return the favor uh, for Hallen and, and knock him out. And um, yeah, it does feel good. To be very honest, it does feel good. So there's been a lot of talk about your seniors over the last four years. They have accomplished a lot for this program. You guys have had a lot of success. How does it feel to see them accomplish what they have this year, the last run, wanting to go out the way that they're going to go out? You know, it, it's fun. And at this point, they've seen everything the coaching staff can give them. So, you know, we're not making big changes. They've seen all our practices. They know what we want from them. Uh, you know, now it's them grabbing the bull by the horns and it's them tightening the screws a little bit. Uh, it's, it's as much as they can squeeze out. We've squeezed everything out that we could out of them. Now it's the seniors' turn to, to kind of take grips and, and see what they got left. Welcome back to Clear Fork High School, being joined by Austin Miller. Austin, congratulations, a big victory tonight. How good does it feel knowing you're playing for a state title? Uh, it's an amazing thing. First time in school history to be able to get over this state semi hump and just kind of taking it all in. It's an amazing thing. You know, tonight the offense really got going early going. You had a nice assist to Sam Tenwaldy early for the first goal, then scored one on your own second. Being up 2 nothing, does that let you guys breathe a little bit? And did you think maybe you guys got a little bit too relaxed and had to refocus? Uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, going or finishing out the first half, I think we, we, we held them off like I, I thought we were doing well with a 2-0 lead, but 2-0 is also a scary lead, and they came out firing in the second half, got one on us. We were able to hold them off the rest of the game, but 2 is definitely a scary lead. So one more game left to go, state, state title just beyond there. Obviously, that's how you guys want to finish the season, but an incredible career so far. You and the rest of the seniors have seen a ton of success. How does it feel knowing that you guys are going to be playing in the last game that you could pen could ever play with each other and with that state title on the line? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, they're not just teammates, they're, they're friends, they're family. And I mean, we've all been playing together since we were five, six years old. So, I mean, that chemistry has been building and uh, generations before us have been putting in the work. It's been district semis, district finals, regional semis, regional finals, and now state semis and state finals. And we've finally been able to get over that that hump and it's an amazing thing. This, is, this all goes back to the guys that played before us. Austin Miller. One of the leaders on this Shawnee team, they have the opportunity to bring home the first state title in school history on Saturday at Lower.com Field. Austin, congratulations on a great game tonight and an even more successful career. Good Thank luck you. Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it.